What organizations need is an easy automation platform that reduces technical debt. And what constitutes such a platform is that it must be software as a service, because if you look at how the industry goes and how organizations are changing their IT landscapes, there is no point establishing an automation solution that is required to run a new data center. At the same time, a native service oriented architecture is really critical as we are moving away more from these monolithic applications and going more towards services and service orientation is a key attribute of any automation you want to do. As part of that also it's really important that the, the automation capability is process centric so you can model your processes as actual processes and services which you can then drive based on data. So it's no longer uh, acceptable to have time-based thinking, you really need data-driven uh, processes and services. And all of that must be available in a robust and scalable version in order to meet all these current demands that we see from the marketplace. When we say automation as software as a service, what does that really mean? And, and in order to, to explain that better, we need to think of the SPI model. SPI standing for software as a service, P for platform as a service and I for infrastructure as a service. And these, these three letters relate to different levels of service you get or different responsibilities that are taken away from you as you consume services from the cloud. So if you think of infrastructure as a service, that basically means you run a virtual machine somewhere or that's been ran for you while you have to manage all the rest. So the application, the database, the operations of that, you still need to manage that yourself. If you think of platform as a service, that could be, for instance, a database. While you have a database managed by someone else for you, the application on top of the database and the data itself, you still need to manage. And only software as a service really is a setup where all of the, the operational burden is taken away from you from the tin up until keeping the, the, uh, the application running. And we believe that that's the proper, proper way to do it because it's not just sufficient to install software on a virtual machine that just happens to run on Google Cloud or um, Microsoft Azure or AWS. So when you think of software as a service that we provide to our customers, it's, but it's not only related to what we do within our own technology, the fundamental part of thinking software as a service is how we are able to connect our solution in the cloud with the customer's landscape and how we can make that interaction seamlessly work with cloud in mind. And that relates to many, many things such as how do the agents that we have communicate to the cloud? How do these agents and connections send and, and receive data between the customer's landscape and our cloud offering? How do we encrypt and secure all these communications, whether the application is completely browser-based or not? And there are very, very, many things in addition to just running the service in the cloud that play a role for workload automation being a service that um, we believe is unique and only Redwood really is delivering that with Run My Jobs being purpose-built for that setup. In addition to the, the technical architecture and the, the fact that Run My Jobs was really purpose-built to be a software as a service solution, its functional architecture plays a fundamental role in the way it allows organizations to reduce the effort they have to put in place to maintain in their processes and keep the processes running. And one of the key, key attributes is that we have an object-orientated approach to use the system. So we separate the instructions of what needs to be automated from the data that is required in order to automate, from the information around under which user context it should be automated, and from the information at what point of time and under which conditions uh, or what events that automation should happen. So only when these four things come together, then you have an actual process happening, taking place, that then carries out whatever it's supposed to be doing. And that separation allows us to create the highest reusability uh, that is imaginable in, in, the, in the industry. And to give you some data points, um, if we look at other competitive products uh, migrating to Roma Jobs, we often see um, that you need 
10 times less objects in order to deliver the same outcome, which then means you have 10 times less effort of maintaining all your components in the automation as you move forward with Redwood. When you think of service-oriented architecture, um, it is essential that there is an opportunity not just to build and configure comprehensive automations, but you want to make these automations consumable from other tools and services within your organization. And Run My Jobs is natively so because every automated process that you configure in Run My Jobs can be exposed as a service that can be called by external applications. As such, it's just part of its own nature. Uh, and at the same time, it allows to put sufficient governance around it. So not just anybody can just call any, any automated process. There is an authentication, an authorization, a security, and a governance, governance model put behind. So you can expose automations in a very controlled and managed way to also fulfill your IT governance duties. One of the key important things that's often forgotten is that you need lifecycle management for your automation. So from developing, uh, transporting, testing, managing um, those things, and also the operational process of people allowing, to, allowing people to request automations, all of these activities around lifecycle management are available within that one product, Run My Jobs, that we have. So there's no modules or components or other bolt-ons that you need in order to be able to manage the entire life cycle of your automations. It's just there within the product that exists. Ultimately, and, and that, that's I think the key takeaway, automation needs to be easy. It needs to allow you to reduce technical debt in terms of the amount of work you have to do, the amount of customization you have to do, it must be service orientated. It must be software as a service because that takes away a lot of burden from you regarding operational activities and allows you to be more of an automation advisor within the company. And you need to have those capabilities of process-centric automation, data-driven automation, and the scalability to really deliver towards the IT automation and business service automation demands that you see within your enterprise.